Good morning. <clears throat> I'm going to spend the next few minutes introducing you to one of our new tools. Um, this is called the drill press sanding disc. It is a incredibly simple tool, but it can do profound things at the drill press. It can do things at the drill press that I never thought I could do at the drill press. So, and I'll go over three of those things, uh, three examples of those things. Um, but like I said, it's a pretty simple tool. It's just an acrylic disc that we had CNC'd out and it's got an arbor on it. And you hook this together and then you can stick it in the drill press and you can sand. But what makes it so useful are if you use these 3M Cubitron discs. These discs cut faster, last longer than any disc I have ever used. And so that's what makes this thing so amazing. Also, what makes it these amazing is that they have a film back. The back is actually plastic, so it doesn't tear. And it has this wonderful pressure-sensitive adhesive that grips really well onto the acrylic. But then you can peel it off when your disc gets dull to replace it and it doesn't leave any residue behind. So let me go over quickly how you set this thing up. So it's going to come like this. They're just going to come with the acrylic. It still has the paper on it. You'll need to peel the paper off. And also they come in two sizes. It comes in six inch or five inch. I don't really have a preference. Just I just have one of each. Uh, here's an arbor that comes with it. Um, the arbor comes with this little flange here that you can use if you want on the bottom. But what that does is that's gonna that flange is gonna stick down below and it might interfere with what you're gonna do with tasks that you're performing. So what I like to do is I like to countersink the acrylic to take this countersink screw so that it's it's, it's flush. So I can put a disc on the bottom and there's the, the screw doesn't interfere. So what I do is I I can't, I can't uh, recommend these more highly. These are the single flute countersinks that we sell. This thing will cut so smooth with no chatter. I just cut just deep enough with these countersinks so the screw is below the surface. Um, then what I do is I take a, uh, on my screw, on the end of my screw, I'll just put a little drop of thread locker. I'll assemble this and I'll put this in a vise or if you don't have a vise, you can just actually chuck it up in your drill press. And then I take a screw and I really tighten the screw down because you do not want this thing coming loose. So then I'll stick it in the drill press and I'll turn it on. And by the way, I really don't turn my drill press up more than maybe 500 RPMs. What that does is it gives me much more control because I'm moving slower. The, the drill press is moving more slowly, but also it doesn't burn. It doesn't, parts don't get pulled out of my hand and stuff like that. So it's, I really like the slower speed. So I set my drill press at about 500 RPM. I'll chuck this in the drill press and then this edge here is a little sharp from the CNC. So I'll just, I'll just sand it off, knock the edge off a little bit so that uh, before I put my paper on, just to prepare the disc for the paper. Then I'll take a disc and I'll stick it on the bottom, uh, the bottom piece. I'll just take it, I just center it here and I just stick it on. You're good to go. That's a 180. Now the top has, a, has this arbor in the way, so you're going to have to cut a, cut a hole in your disc. So what I do is I simply just mark the center. I just come in from several directions, set this at like this is a six inch disc. I just set my ruler at three inches, got my center. Then I just take a compass and I just draw a circle around. And then I just dig that out with a box cutter. And that just takes a couple seconds. I dig out the center. And then once the center's dug out, then if I peel this off, then I can have a hole that go, that kind of takes, gets around that, uh, ah, see that film backing is tough stuff. So there you go. So now I have a um, center hole and I just take this off and I'll just drop this over the top, center it on there. Now I have a 320 on top and a 180 on bottom. I have two of these I use. I have one that has pretty fine grits. Um, I usually put uh, the rougher grit on the bottom, the finer grit on top. And I have another one here that I'll show you when I actually sharpen chisels on this. It's got 80 on the bottom, which is super rough. And I think it has 120 on the top. So let me go ahead and get over to the drill press and I will show you a couple things you can do with these discs. They're pretty cool. So here we are at the drill press and I make a lot of puzzles and small tools and I need to lap things flat, small parts like this. Um, I, doing it on a belt sander is just too aggressive and it burns and 
parts go flying out of my hand. So that doesn't work. And I can flat lap them on like a piece of sandpaper, you know, attached to a board, which works, but it takes a long time. This though has greatly simplified my process of doing that. So here's a part I glued up. It's got three parts and um, they're pretty flush, but I need, I need to sand them smooth. So I'm going to show you how fast that is. So I got a 320 in the top, got a six inch disc. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I just flushed up all three sides. Now they are smooth as smooth can be. And you know what? It just took me a few seconds. You'll see some cross grain scratches. Sometimes when I do that, um, I try to put it on here so that the scratches aren't going across grain. But if I do, I can just flat put a piece of fine paper on a, on a board, just flat lap out the scratches. And that's so fast. So let me show you how I would do even this one inch square piece of purple heart. This would be impossible to do on a belt center without risking my fingers. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so I had so much control when I did that, and it was a very controlled uh, sand, so I didn't grind it out of square. See, it's all square. I even did the end grain. There were some uh, saw marks in the end grain. Do you know how long that would take me if I'd done it on, on a flat lap or a belt sand? It would just been a mess. This purple heart is really hard. So this is amazing. So what you can also do is you can also put a little rougher paper on the bottom, and if you have something significant to remove, and then you can actually finish it off on the top like this. So I can go on the bottom and then I can come to the top if I want. So there you have it. This is how you could sand small parts. I don't think there's a better way for sanding small parts than using this disc. So here's another use for the sanding disc and that is to dimension thin stock. Uh, frequently I'll make parts that are thin out of exotic wood that's super hard and there's just no way I can plane them even with my helix cutter head. Um, if I get down to eighth of an inch or a little bit more, it'll just blow up in the planer. So this sanding disc allows me to do that. So what I have here is a 180 disc on the bottom. Preferably, I would like a 220 disc. That would give me a little bit smoother finish. But what I've done is I've just taken a board and I have cut a groove in it. That's the width of my piece that I need. And it's, it's shallow. So it's, it's, it's shallower than the thickness of my piece. And then I just feed it through. And I, then I just take my table. I just raise my drill press table until my sanding disc touches the piece. That's kind of my initial setup. Then after that, I just raise my table very slowly and I'll stick this, this piece through here and I can dimension stock so efficiently and so, so nicely. So let me show you how that works. I'll just feed a piece through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my table just slightly, just a little bit. And then I just feed this through. The back side, I can just pull on it, pull it through. So there you have it. It's really nicely sanded. Now, you are going to get some scratch marks because the disc does go across the grain, but simply just take a sanding block with the same grit that's on your disc and just run with the grain and it's just going to take a few passes and you're going to remove those scratch marks very easily. So one more use for the saying disc, dimensioning thin stock. All right, the last thing I'm going to show you, um, the well, last thing you can do with this sanding disc at the drill press is you can actually sharpen edge tools. Um, I am super excited about this. I mean, I have struggled for years to get a good straight edge on a chisel. Like a lot of times I'll grind a chisel and then I'll put a secondary bevel on it and then, you know, I can go for a long, a long period of time sharpen, you know, multiple times, but at some point you have to refresh that primary bevel and trying to get a nice straight edge on a grinder without burning it is tough. And so, um, plus, you know, grinders cost money. I got a one inch belt sander as well. And they're just, they're, they're an expense, but this is probably the cheapest way. And actually I feel like it's the most efficient way to regrind a primary bevel, but you have to have this little jig here. So let me explain how this jig works. This jig is just eight quarter stock here that I um, cut to about 10 inches long, nine inches, I think. And then I just cut a 25 degree bevel here. I just stuck it on the 
on my chop saw and just cut that corner off and that's all I did. And then I added a little base to the bottom so that it had a little more stability. And then I put this little fence over here. This fence acts to, uh, keeps the chisel from, the, the disc is coming this way, you know, so it keeps the chisel from knocking off the block, but it also is a nice 90 degree reference. It keeps your bevel at 90 degrees. So the reason this thing works, or one thing you gotta be aware of when you make it is you have to make sure that you get a 90 degree in the bottom here, you got a 90 degree at the top, and that your ramp is 90 degree, just check it all. But if you're if you're if you're using it and sanding with it, you can't always just like I had to just shim this up a little bit with some blue tape because it was just a little bit off. But then you you have this on your drill press and you have your disc at the top, and then you actually just feed your chisel in to the bottom side of the disc and it grinds it. It's amazing. So let me go ahead and I'll pop over to the drill press and show you how this works. Oh, actually, I started. I did this chisel yesterday. This was a it's a one and a half inch slick. This thing is about five sixteenths or three eighths of an inch thick. And I had, there, someone had dropped it and there was a, just a ding in the corner, a huge ding. I had to grind off at least a 16th inch of material. And the nice thing about this was, is I ground it off. I made a custom one, because this is 30 degrees, made a custom one of these ramps. And I ground this off and because the drill press is moving at a slow speed, it never got hot. I didn't ever have to worry about the temper being removed. It was amazing. It took off a ton of steel and I was able to regrind this chisel. And I don't know how, any other way that I could have done this. I mean, for me to maneuver this on a on a grinder would have been hard. Um, it's just too too big of a tool, but I was able to get this and do it at the drill press quite nicely. So let's pop over to the drill press, and I'll show you how to sharpen a chisel. All right, we're at the drill press. I got a chisel here. It's got a pretty big secondary bevel. I need to clean that up. It's so my primary bevel is 25, ramp set at 25. So what I do, my initial setup is I just uh, set my disc up so it's slightly above the top of my jig. And then I simply just push my chisel in. I found that it's better to push the chisel in straight in than it is to push it in from the side. I think that it's kind of weird, but the outside of this disc spins faster than, you know, the inside of the disc. So it may remove more material from one side of the chisel than the other. But if I just push it in straight, set it up here like this and push it in straight, I have better results. But what I do is I make sure I push down real hard on the chisel so it doesn't move around. And I just push it straight in. Let's see how this goes. So I just push it straight in and I can move this back and forth to different spots on the on the disc to get fresh sandpaper. It does make a few sparks. But another thing I have you notice is that it's warm but it's not too hot to touch. This is amazing. So now I'm just going to push that in. So now I've refreshed that entire bevel. It's completely sanded smooth. And if I check it, it is pretty darn close to square. So that's amazing. Another thing you could do is you can put a fine grit on the top. And if you're doing your initial chisel setup, you can actually flatten the backs of your chisels on this and get, get you know, do most of the work. And then you can actually go back and hone it. So there you have it. Uh, grinding a chisel on the drill press with the Tay Tools drill press sanding disc.